Hello ladies and gentlemen, take out your encyclopedias, dictionaries, and overall educational material so we can help prevent you from losing IQ points. That's it for the introduction. The best way to tackle this is, well, by diving right in. Since abortion is a conversation that's back on the scene, let's talk about it. I will be looking at Ben Shapiro's arguments because nothing's better than two men talking about legislation that has no effect on their bodies whatsoever. Progress! It's pretty convenient when you can transform a pretty big and controversial issue into something that it's not. Hassan Piker believes that if something doesn't affect your body, you should have no say in what happens. I typically agree with that principle, but even the most basic principles can be stretched thin and break down when you try to apply them consistently. Let me explain. If I go and kill my neighbor, unjustly, I might add, should you care? No, you shouldn't. It's not your body. But you might say, I'm taking someone's life. And I'd say, exactly. That's how people who are unapologetically pro-life see the issue. They argue that the fetus, the unborn, or baby is a life. And this argument is made both scientifically, politically, and philosophically. This is why I've always found that argument rather inane and dishonest. Now here's my broad view. Abortion should be 100% legal, they should be safe, and hopefully not very common. I think you can be pro-life and pro-choice at the same time. Most people actually are. You can choose not to get an abortion, but you shouldn't deny others that same liberty. Especially since it is a fact that an abortion ban does not decrease abortions, it just makes them incredibly unsafe. But here's how the big anti-abortion advocate Ben Shapiro approaches this subject, with a lot of feelings and not necessarily a lot of facts. Start Starting by describing a partial birth abortion to make his argument that this is representative of all abortions. This is a baby that was that was it was a it was a picture of a baby uh, that was aborted by Kermit Gosnell. Now this is a partial birth abortion where the fetus has viability outside the body. It is illegal, hence the person who committed this crime was found guilty and is now in prison. But since we're talking facts, 92% of legal US abortions take place in the first 13 weeks inside the first trimester, okay? It's usually an incredibly difficult decision, followed by a very simple process that involves taking a hormone pill. In some instances, there's also a surgical procedure, but it is not a baby being killed. So this photo is not representative of anything remotely like what takes place the vast majority of time. Which, by the way, is exactly what people want to make illegal. As a matter of fact, it's shameful that someone who claims to care so much about facts would try to sway others with such a transparently emotional appeal and basically lie to his followers. Ben Shapiro here isn't exactly making an emotional argument. As a matter of fact, Ben Shapiro was instead making a scientific and philosophical argument. Anyone who actually knows Ben Shapiro or has heard him speak about abortion thoroughly, understands that Ben Shapiro isn't arguing that every single abortion is done exactly like a partial birth abortion. Of course, you can make it seem that way if you choose to cut out specific arguments. This is straw man, and if you don't know what a straw man is, let me explain it for you. A straw man is when you take someone's position and transform it into something different to make it easier to argue against, which is the opposite of what I am doing with Hassan here. What Ben Shapiro is saying is that at this point, as Hassan Piker admits, it is a life. It is clearly a human being. And again, anyone who has ever heard Ben Shapiro talk about this, he makes the argument that if you think it is a life at this point, how can you say it is not a life one day before that point? What about one week before that? If you are inquiring to know how Ben Shapiro explains it, please listen to his words for yourself. Links will be in the description box below. To finish my response to this particular clip of Hassan, the only one lying here is Hassan Piker by deliberately misrepresenting Ben Shapiro's argument. So you are pro-life, I'm pro-choice. Mm -hmm. I, I would describe myself at this point, I'm begrudgingly pro-choice. I, I, I think that- To the, which point? The reason I'm asking my, to what point is, I'm, I'm asking to what oh, point oh, in the to pregnancy. to what point in the pregnancy. In the pregnancy. So I would yeah. say, so from all the, from everything I have read, I think that basically until 20 weeks, that 20 weeks they've done enough studies that they know that that fetus can feel pain basically and that i would say at that point th i mean this is where so, so you're, this, not, this so you're is, not actually pro-choice right i mean you're pro-life beyond 20 weeks but so i would argue that basically for the first 20 weeks that it, it it's a shitty thing it's an unfortunate horrible thing that no one wants to do why? But I would say that the woman should be allowed to choose what to do with her body so i'll ask you so yeah. i'm asking you why on that why is it a bad thing 
why is it's, it a, a bad, it's, a, it's a terrible, terrible thing you said up to that point. Because I do, I do believe that, look, I can't tell you, no one can tell you where the, the genesis of life begins. So I do believe it is a life. Some of this is just a little bit of belief. I'll, no, I, no, 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 that's, no, that's fine. So, yeah. uh, so, but so, you are, so you're acknowledging that it's at least a potential life. Yes, and oh, without life. question. But the, you think that the woman's right for any reason or for some reason to do an I abortion? Think up, Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's either a life or it's not a life. You just suggested that a life beyond six months is basically is a life, not basically is a life. I, I'll go so, twenty weeks. Right, twenty. Right, so twenty weeks beyond okay. twenty weeks, it is a life. So now, and I'm not even arguing that before twenty weeks, it's not a life. I'm just right. arguing that. But you're you're arguing that it's a fully fledged life yeah. in the same way that you or I are a fully fledged life. Yeah. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then the government obviously has a role in restricting. I mean, at that point, there's literally no difference except the location. And the location five inches this way or five inches this way does not seem to make much of a difference. To me, the most dangerous thing here is not the government restricting. It's the, the suggestion that human beings have the subjective capacity to define as life that which they wish to preserve. That's a really tough one. In that, once you say that someone gets to de- de- define a human life based on their own emotional state, that's a really dangerous place to be. There's got to be some sort of objective definition of human life that, at which time is protected. Because, and you agree with that because you, yeah. you agree that it's past birth, right? But I'm saying that it's not past birth. I'm saying it's much earlier than that. And as far as the financial point, there, you know, it's right, not right. 300. This is in China. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's, so yeah, the, the pro-life position, it seems to me, is, it's, it's pretty clear. I, I don't think that it's, it's a vague argument. I don't think it's a particularly complex argument. Uh, I think that people try to make it more complex because they're looking for a way to make it more morally palatable or emotionally palatable for them to. And this is why I was asking you at the very beginning. Yeah. Why is it bad that somebody has an abortion at 19 weeks? Right. If you if you acknowledge. I, like, I am you know, acknowledging. I know. Yeah. If, if you take the safe, legal and rare position, this is why I think the Democratic Party position from the 90s makes no sense. When they say safe, legal and rare, mm-hmm. the question is, why rare? You wouldn't say removal of a polyp, safe, legal and rare. Mm-hmm. You'd say safe and legal. Right. I mean, it's a polyp. If your position is a baby's not a baby, then who cares if you kill it? If your position is the baby's a baby, then you, you got a whole world of hurt on your hands, morally speaking, by saying it's okay to kill it. Yeah, and and as I would have said to you when we started this portion of the conversation, I mean, this is why I say begrudgingly. Yeah. I, 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 I'll get you over here eventually. Yeah. All right, we'll do this I'll, again. Okay, we'll okay, this I'll again. keep battering you on this issue. I'm nothing if not flexible uh, mentally, you know? <laughs> but back to you, Ben. Describe us the horrific details of the incredibly rare and illegal procedure of partial birth abortions. Involves the snipping off of the uh, the crushing of the skull, the sucking out of the brains. It involves, and, and these are fully formed children. Oh, okay, wait a minute. So now you're past the point of talking about viability outside the womb. You're past the point of even calling them babies. You're just claiming that these are fully formed children, Ben. Yeah? They're, they're playing with Legos and shit inside the womb. Okay, got it. I included this because it showcases that in Hassan's mind, a fetus that is viable outside of the womb is not a fully formed baby because it doesn't have the capability of playing with Legos. That is not a straw man, those are his words. If you're working extra hard to make the case that abortion should be completely illegal because of something that's already illegal, then maybe you've lost the argument from the jump. What are you trying to do here, Ben? The question is, Hassan, what are you trying to do here? Ben is making a philosophical argument about where life begins, and at what point is it okay to terminate life? As the picture he showed of the partial birth abortion doesn't have DNA that is separate from what it had weeks prior to its current development before it was aborted. Hassan, be honest. And let's talk about late-term abortions. They are different than what Shapiro is describing. They're only legal in seven states and are very rare, usually reserved for instances where the mother's health is in jeopardy, a previously unknown abnormality is found, or when the fetus cannot live outside the body. The idea that women will be taking on this much more expensive and invasive procedure if it's completely legal is idiotic and is a purely male-driven fantasy. No woman should be forced to carry out an unwanted pregnancy. Not only did Hassan strawman Ben Shapiro's actual argument, he ran with it. It's easy to argue against something when you can make up your own opposition's argument as you go. While no women should be forced to carry out an unwanted pregnancy, no innocent life should be terminated whether or not they have gone through a live birth. Do you see where the water gets a little muddy? I hate this part about the conversation about abortion. It's controlled by extremists and lacks actual nuance. Both sides treat it as if it is a black and white issue. We gloss over important questions like why the woman got pregnant in the first place. Why did she let a guy come inside of her? Why didn't she take plan B if she knew a guy ejaculated inside of her? Why weren't they wearing a condom? Why wasn't birth control involved? Why wasn't the pull-out method utilized? 
why wasn't all of the above used? You can argue that accidents happen, which I agree with, but most girls can tell if a guy has unleashed his sperm all up in her. Let's be real, anybody who has had sex without a condom and played a game of pregnancy Russian roulette understands this. There are preventative measures, but for some reason, it's controversial to say these things. Why? And the other reality is people are forced into late-term abortions because of the logistical delays imposed on them by the pro-life crowd. Essentially, in red states where women seeking abortions are forced to jump through all kinds of unnecessary hoops and clinics performing abortions are required to deal with ever-increasing red tape and government scrutiny. The pro-life crowd, in its essence, are responsible for more late-term abortions than they're not. Great. Can you give me examples? Also, why is someone who cares about the sanctity of life responsible for the irresponsibility of two adults who choose to have sex, again, without birth control, condoms, plan B, pull-out method, or all of the above? If I ejaculate inside of a girl without implementing any one of these methods, I am responsible for that entirely, not some pro-lifer. That argument is silly and shouldn't even be used. And if you believe that all abortion is murder, then where does life begin? Does life begin at conception? So what are the legal boundaries you'd enforce for that? No, no more coming? You have to pull out every time or we're gonna arrest you? Sorry, libtards. <laughs> I think he just tried to say that coming inside of a woman using some form of contraception is murder. That's a straw man, if I have ever heard one. Coming for pleasure, whether it be masturbation, casual sex, or romantic sex, isn't even remotely similar to the growth of a human baby. If you have to straw man someone's argument into such an inane extreme, you shouldn't be arguing about the issue at all. While I hate these theoretical scenarios that Ben routinely engages in, here's a good one for you to use in the future. If there was a fire in a hospital and you had the option of saving a child, and then on the other side you had 100 fertilized embryos inside of a in vitro fertilization tanks, which one would you choose to save? That's technically 100 lives you'd be saving over the one life, right? There's a reason why virtually everyone who's being honest would choose the child. It's because there's a difference between life outside of the body and fertilized eggs. I hope Everyone here is able to understand the difference between Hassan's theoretical scenario versus the made-up hypothetical scenario that Mr. Piker here tried to claim that Ben Shapiro was making. A woman choosing to abort a baby is not the same thing as choosing between a child and 100 fertilized embryos. If you think that is the same thing, I am sorry, but there is no conversation to be had. When making analogies, it is important to make the fair and reasonable with the given situation within context. Most conservatives or pro-lifers, whether or not they are conservative, if put in a situation between saving a mother or the baby or the fetus and the womb, they would choose the mother. It's not because they don't see the fetus as a living organism, it's because we tend to subconsciously place a value on certain things that require swift action. We're not always aware of this when we make these decisions, and it may sound harsh, but we make moral judgments all the time. I'll give you some hypothetical scenarios that actually make sense and showcase that we make moral decisions all the time. As human beings, we make cold, calculated decisions. Okay, scenario number one. There's two houses. One house is yours, and both of these houses have a swimming pool. Therefore, one swimming pool is yours. Your kid is drowning in your pool. Your neighbor's kid is drowning in their pool. In this hypothetical situation, you are aware both kids are drowning. You have to choose to save one. Which one do you save? Most likely, you're going to save your own kid. It's not because you hate human life and kids or don't value human life. It's because you value your kid more than you do someone else's kid. You made a moral judgment based on tribe, blood, time, effort, wealth, memories, and so on. Scenario number two, you wake up in the middle of the night to a loud noise. You grab a handgun and check it out. You see a masked man in your house. You warn him to leave. He doesn't. He rushes at you with a knife. Do you shoot him or do you let him stab you? You'll probably choose to shoot him. It's not because you don't value a life. It's not because you want to shoot people. It's because you made a moral judgment that your life was more important and that in this case, you were the victim. Does that make sense? Scenario number three. Do you save your child or the family dog? We can make these hypothetical scenarios all day. 
So in Hassan's scenario with the child versus the fertilized embryos, yeah, most people will choose the child. Again, it sounds harsh, it sounds cold, and it sounds sociopathic, but we're going to choose the child because the child has already been born. The child is conscious. The child has a better chance of surviving. The child has relationships with people that the embryos don't have. Believe it or not, but those are all reasons to make a moral judgment. Again, we do it all the time. Do you save your girlfriend? Or do you save your worst enemy's girlfriend from drowning if they are both drowning at the same time? You have to choose one. You can't choose both. Once more, let me be clear. Choosing between saving a child that is born versus 100 fertilized eggs is not the same thing as a woman choosing to terminate a life. That is a false equivalency. And it's not a matter of personal choice. Okay, I have a stake in whether my neighbor gets murdered. And I have a stake in whether my neighbor's baby gets murdered too. Ultimately, if you'd really like to decrease the amount of abortions, you'd push for greater sex ed and R&D investments into better contraceptive options for both men and women. That's the only real thing that would actually decrease the amount of abortions, and it has. However, those same people pushing for anti-abortion legislation are usually the ones who also block sex ed and Planned Parenthood funding when Planned Parenthood is doing way more work to decrease the number of abortions with family planning services than they ever would. Talk about lying. About 90% of Planned Parenthood services don't provide any health or family services unless you think abortion is a parental service. Most abortion clinics don't. Also, most conservatives aren't against sexual education or contraceptive. Some absolutely are. Some are on a personal level. But Hassan here is making a hasty generalization about what all conservatives believe. He is implying that conservatism is entirely made up of radical Christians who wish to use the government to control you. That isn't true. Just like I'd never say all pro-choice people think abortion is moral or that all supposed liberals are communists or pro-abortion. In fact, most Americans, including Republicans and Democrats, actually agree on how sex education should be handled. And because Hassan Piker thinks that conservatism is represented by radical evangelicals, he is ignorant of the fact that Republicans actually pushed a bill attempting to make birth control available over the counter. As a matter of fact, Planned Parenthood and other supposed women's rights advocacy groups opposed legislation making birth control available over the counter because, well, as the American College of obstetricians and gynecologists, President Mark DeFrancesco put it, the Republicans' plan to make it available over the counter would make more women have to pay for their birth control and for some women the cost would be prohibitive. Basically, these groups won't cheer unless you force insurance companies or taxpayer money to cover the cost. And look, here's my olive branch to Ben. Let's go to an abortion clinic together. Let's go talk to doctors, one that you choose and one that I choose. Let's go dive deeper into this issue because it seems to me like you genuinely do care about this from an emotional perspective. So let's have an honest conversation. Maybe we can change people's minds. You know where to reach me. As I have clearly demonstrated, the only person being emotional and dishonest is Hassan Piker. Listen, I'd love to have an honest conversation about abortion. I'd love to get into the science, the philosophical arguments, moral and ethical arguments, religious arguments, and of course anecdotal arguments. But this video wasn't the video to do it on. Hassan Piker didn't set up a video to actually talk about abortion. Instead, he made a video to straw man rather than steel man somebody's position. Steel manning is taking someone's position, making it stronger and representing it accurately so when you thoroughly tackle it and critique it, you actually make sense, come across as honest, and it makes it seem as if you have actually put critical thought into it. Have a good day. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want more content, don't forget to subscribe so you can check back and see more future videos regarding politics and culture. While you're at it, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be notified when a new video is uploaded. Also, check out my links to my Facebook and Twitter in the description box below. Ooh.